Today I want to talk about balance of the grace and the law of God. <coughs> that how we apply to our life. That um, you know, compared to all religions, because God is a true God, in Him you can see perfect love at the same time perfect holiness. In many religions, people, you know, they might have some power, but you notice that sometimes people use power of witchcraft uh, to kill other people, to hurt other people. So there is no righteousness. And uh, some people in some religions, people just worship the gods to get blessings. But then they might worship uh, and get blessings for bad purposes. But the true God is totally <coughs> loving and holy. And that is the beauty about Him. Now we are talking about the love of God the first day, that His love is so strong. And then uh, one Bible verse I want to say is Romans chapter 8. Then it says that nothing can separate us from the love of God. That I'm convinced that neither death nor life, even death cannot separate us from the love of God. Neither angels nor demons. Even demons, we don't have to be afraid of demons. Neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, any kind of powers, earthly power or spiritual power, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That nothing can separate us from the love of God. Then you can use this picture, like if this is you, His love is holding on to you. Amen. Cannot be separated. Holding very tight, His love is with you all the time. So when I pray, I pray like this, Oh Lord, I know your love is upon me. Please help me that I don't have anything that blocks your love. Because God's love is coming to me. It's whether I block Him with my doubts or a weakness or any kind of sin. When we block the love of God, then we don't experience God's love. But if we open our hearts totally to God, then His love is with us all the time. And His love is very real. Uh, when Psalm 139 verse 5, I quoted this verse already. Because this verse is very easy to remember that I paraphrase it that the Lord, you are in front of me and behind me and you're laying his, your hand upon me. So he's blessing us all the time and ministering to us all the time. So we can think of, oh God, you, you. Is God our slave? Is God our slave? No, but he serves us more than a slave does. That he will serve us all the time for eternity. Always serves us is unimaginable. I hope you say, we have such a wonderful God. You know, the more I think about God, the more I say, it's so wonderful. I really appreciate God. When I think of God, I like Him very much. And that's the key to being filled with the Holy Spirit. All the time, I look at things from the perspective of heaven, perspective of God. You know, when you look at things from the perspective on earth, you'll be like this. You come across a difficulty and say, oh, it's so hard, it's so hard. No way out. A lot of times people are like that, right? Oh, what can I do? Because from human perspective, we have no control over environment or people, or whatever happened to us, our health, we have no control. And so a lot of people look at problems and then they worry. But with God's, from God's perspective, we, knows that, we know that He is almighty and He really helps. I have experienced so many help, it's unimaginable. That uh, the other day I talked about that one accident, I almost died, right? But I, did I? Yes. And I want to tell another accident that it was really miraculous. I was going fast it was because it was freeway, it was going fast. And then I didn't realize it, it was actually uh, very late at night. And I didn't realize that there was ice on the uh, freeway. Just one spot, there was ice. And then when I went to one spot, it spin. And then it spin, there were two lanes on each side. And I spin past the other lane and go to the middle of the freeway. And then the moment I stopped there, a big truck passed me. And I just imagine, if I spin one split second earlier or later, 
I would have been hit by the truck. Mm -hmm. But my car just spin to the center. Mm -hmm. I mean, that truck would see me spin, and then suddenly, and then, but then the car, uh, my car spin away to the center, so I was not hit. And I say, Lord, this is wonderful. And I remember all these things that God has done to us, to me, and I see so many people experience God. I always say, God, you're so good, so wonderful. Have you exper experienced the blessings of God? Yes. Can you raise your hand? If you have experienced the blessings of God, or the peace of God, or the love of God, have you experienced that? Yes. And you see that God is so real. I hope. You always think of God as so beautiful, so wonderful, so good, so loving. Always keep that in your mind and enjoy that and look from the perspective of God and, and then don't worry about things and trust in God's provision. That's very, very important and then you will not be afraid of situation or difficulties. Okay, so that's the love of God. The other side is the righteousness of God, the commandments of God. Now when people think about the righteousness of God, the holiness of God, some people are afraid. They say, I, I'm a sinner, I've sinned, and I don't like it. So, actually, many preachers might, you know, avoid talking about the holiness of God, and many Christians think of, I like the love of God, but the holiness of God, I don't want to think about it too much. <coughs> But let me tell you, the holiness of God is very, very beautiful. In heaven, one day, when you go to heaven, I hope you all go to heaven. I hope you say, yes, Lord, I don't want to go to hell. I want to hold on to you. I want to follow you. I want to have the blessings of God. I want to obey you. Even though some people say, I want to have the fun of the world. But let me tell you, the fun of the world is temporary and it's destructive. But if you follow God's way, and you have blessings. I have blessings. I have joy and love all the time. I have good friends all the time. <coughs> people who are in sins face the, you know, the craftiness of people, the cunningness of people, that people around them are so cunning and, and are not loving. And they think they have fun. Actually, they're always facing bad people. But the holiness of God is very good. I hope we all follow God. And one day when you go to heaven, you know, sometimes on earth here, there are Christians who might not, might have some problem with you. Sometimes. If this is that Christian who has some problem with you on earth, and then you go to heaven, and you see him, will he pretend that he doesn't see you? Will he turn his face away from you? In heaven, no more. On earth he might do that. But in heaven, He will look at you and say, I'm so happy you're here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And He'll be very happy and free. So the holiness of God means that there's no more sin, no more darkness. You know that the Bible says that in, in 1 John chap, uh, 1 chapter 5, that God is light and in Him no darkness at all. There's no darkness at all. That also in heaven, when we go to heaven, there's no more darkness. It's all love and acceptance and care, no more darkness. And it will be very beautiful because everyone will be so nice. And then you, you might have a whole bunch of people on earth, they might not be nice to you, but in heaven they will all be very nice to you. And you say, heaven is beautiful. Isn't it? You say, it's so beautiful. The holiness of God is so beautiful. Now when we, in the Lord's Prayer, we say, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What it means is the kingdom come means first the kingdom of grace. That we want more people saved. Because people in the world are suffering. And because people are not following God, therefore the, the world has a lot of problems. But if we follow God and pray to God and obey God and turn away from our wickedness, God will hear from heaven and forgive our sins and we will heal, heal the land. If more Christians believe and obey God and, and be, you know, be humble and come to God, God will heal the land. So we pray that more people will be saved. Pray for the kingdom of grace, but also the kingdom of His Lordship. The kingdom of God means first the kingdom of grace and also the kingdom of His Lordship. That means where He rules totally. 
that's his kingdom where he rules totally in your heart in your family does God rule totally in your family are there fights and quarrels yelling unhappiness sadness in most people's family even some Christians who love the Lord when they go to church they they're really excited to praise the Lord and they want to serve God but when they go home they feel unhappy because there is problem in relationship it's hard to deal with people's relationship and so even some people who love God they have problem in relationship so when they go home they would have problem so God is not really ruling in the family so how can we let God rule in the family in our life in the church so that there is totally harmony and love and unity that we have to re realize that sins are very destructive sins are very destructive any kind of sins is destructive and it would destroy our family destroy our church many churches have problems because of people's problem it's not because of God's work it's because of people people everywhere is problem is with people or in a school sometimes you know I hope there's no problem here but I think sometimes there will be problems between teachers between pupils there will be problem of different kinds because where people are there are problems but where the Holy Spirit is there is freedom it's what a comparison right and then the Bible just warn us that sins are terrible for instance in Acts chapter 5 there's a couple called Ananias and Sapphira and they thought they would you know they they because many people at that time sold the houses to dedicate to the Lord and give the money to the church and then now this is not happening today that but in those days they all live like a commune uh, they share the, all the riches and so they they sell the houses but Peter and Sapphira sold the house and kept some of the money and gave the rest to Peter and then Peter asked him is this all the money and he lied and said this is all the money but then Peter said why did you lie before you sold the house the house is yours after you sold the house it's up to you you can give part, part of the money and say this is part of money I've kept part of it it's okay but why did you lie when you lie you're lying to the Holy Spirit and then he died instantly so it tells us that sins are terrible now God is not doing this today not because sin is not terrible it's because God give us time to repent God can do the same thing today he can do the same thing people who sin immediately die but he does not do that out of his grace and the Bible has many warnings for instance that when we sin that we are giving a foothold to the devil that the devil will come to steal to kill and to destroy and also when we sin we are um, what we're doing is when we reap when we sow to the flesh to the sinful nature then we'll reap destruction that things will happen for instance I use a worldly illustration some people have a good job but then they uh, you know they commit some bribery they took some money from the company and then they were exposed and then they lost a good paying job have you heard of news like that they have a very good job but why did they have to be so greedy and get that little money compared to the salary why did they do that it's because of the greed of people and even in the world people can destroy the future by the sins and among Christians too we too can destroy you know we can destroy the family once the relationship is destroyed it's very hard to restore it takes one minute to destroy it takes a long time to build up but if it has been destroyed we can still turn back so uh, I'll talk about the key how can we overcome sins it is possible first we realize that you know by the help of God everything is possible that with God everything is possible that first we have to realize that sins are destructive and and we have to realize the kinds of sins we have for instance you don't like somebody that is already sin because people say that person 
Nobody likes him. Why should I like him? But when we don't like somebody, we don't accept somebody, that is already sin. Because God, you know, the holiness of God is what? Is love God with all your heart and love people as ourselves. When we're not doing that, that is already sin. And also, God's plan is that we live on earth as it is in heaven, like the saints in heaven. When we're not living like that, when we're not living with joy, we are already sinning. You might say, is that true? Yes, when you worry, you are not glorifying God. You're not showing the glory of God. When you doubt, when you, when you feel bad, when you, you're emotional, you're, you're, when you're emotional, then you're already not showing the glory of God, it's already sin. But there are more serious sins than that, that we, people might hurt other people and, and uh, commit adultery. I know that adultery happens a lot in this country that many men will have sex with women and then leave the woman and then many, there are many single mother in this, in this country. And th so these are all sins that destroy. Have you seen the destruction of the sins? First, we must realize, yes, these are sins and they are destructive. So the five steps to victory that God has shown me, that I think I talked about that yesterday, first, is to be aware. Say that. Aware. Okay. aware. So you're aware that in my heart there is some anger, some frustration, some emotions, some negative thinking, some rejection of God. So this is aware. And then second is destructive. Destructive. It is destructive. When we have negative thoughts, when we reject God, it's destructive. The third is apply biblical principles. Apply, say it. Apply biblical principles. That we will say, yes, I want to apply the principles of God to forgive and to forget people's problems and to be nice to them and sympathize with them and have compassion with them, understanding people who hurt us have been hurt many times. So we understand them and then we have compassion on them and then we pray for them and bless them. And that is overcoming wickedness with goodness. That we can have victory in your family, if you treat your spouse nicer every day, gradually you might notice it. Actually, many people said they notice it, but they don't say it. But when you keep doing it, one day it will change. And God can use your wisdom, the words of wisdom. A lot of times people use words of folly. They will say something like, you're no good, you never do well. You don't do the, your job, and it would only destroy. But when you say things that are nice and, and wise, sometimes you can say something like, ah, look at that family, it's so beautiful. I want to have that kind of family here. Can we work on it? Say something nice and say, you know, I remember the time when we fell in love and our relationship was so good. Can we restore the relationship? So say something nice like that and have wisdom that when and, in, and then you can talk about, oh, remember the day when we fell in love? How we treat each other so nicely? Can we do that again? Can we have a, you know, take a walk and just chat and enjoy this time now? Or just have a massage on him. And, and just say, I do love you. I want to have a better relationship with you. Now, don't think that it won't touch his heart or her heart. Don't think that it doesn't work. He might not show it, but if he doesn't say anything negative, keep doing it. And one day he'll change. Right. You'll be surprised to overcome wickedness with goodness. And then gradually, you know, so that's biblical principle. And then four is prayer. That you pray, oh Lord, help me. And then five, you choose. You choose to obey. Okay, let's go over this again. First is aware. Second, Destructive. Destructive. Three, and apply biblical principles. Four, pray. pray. Five, choose, choose to obey. So, and whenever any sins come, we can overcome that. So when we live in God, remember, live in the love of God and live in the holiness of God. But don't live in the guilt. Because the holiness of God also brings guilt. Not because God brings guilt, but because when you look at God's holiness, our sinful nature will cause us to be guilty, to feel guilty. And we remember that 
Satan is the one who accused the brothers day and night. Satan keep accusing. But very often, people work for Satan for free. Keep accusing people and keep <laughs> accusing themselves. Do you want to work for Satan for free? You have nothing back. But very often, we keep accusing ourselves or other people. It doesn't help. When we live in the holiness of God, it's like this. Oh God, your holiness is so beautiful. I want to love God and love people. I want to show people how a Christian can live a glorious life, a loving life, a, love to, a life to care and, and uh, to bless other people. That way you are living in the a, in a love of God and the holiness of God. And also I talk about you know, the word of grace now, when we apply to other people, we use the word of grace like, Oh, you're so good. I like you. I like your heart. You are doing well. And God has a plan in your life. You can do great things. That is word of grace. Now, we still use words of the law, but we use the positive way. Oh, let's work hard. Uh, you have, God has a wonderful plan in your life. If you, uh, you say to the pupils, if you obey God, God will bless you. And one day you can become a great person. So let's listen. So this is the law. Tell them what to do. And you listen to me and obey and do your schoolwork well. And one day you'll become greater and greater. So say it in a positive way. Instead of saying in a negative way, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. When he didn't do it, then you say, can you do it now? Can you immediately correct it? And then, and then the worst is, don't ever say this to pupils. You are no good. You are stupid. Don't ever say things like that. It will leave a mark in their heart forever. That they remember that the teacher doesn't like me. The teacher doesn't accept me. When they've done something wrong, now they are weak. We don't have to make them feel hurt. We can let them know, you know, when pe pe uh, as pupils are not obedient, we can tell them. We can ask them, what do you think about what you have done? Do you feel sorry for it? Can you ask God for, for forgiveness? And God is very happy to forgive you. And God wants to raise up your life that you become better and better. So say it in a positive way. And those are the law. But you know, you tell them what to do. But we want to have the, the love of God and the law of God used properly. But it's always the love of God first. So this today I talk about the balance of the love of God and the law of God. Do you want to find a balance? Now some Christians have the law above the love of God and then all the time they'll say, you didn't do this, you, do, you didn't do that, it's always talking about sins. Then people are not motivated to follow God. But when we talk about the love of God, then, and then tell them what to do, and then people will be motivated to do it. Let's pray to God. Oh Lord Jesus, we come to you. You're so wonderful, oh Lord. You're so wonderful. You are loving and you are holy. Your love is so perfect, and your holiness is so perfect. Oh Lord Jesus, help us to live in your love, and live in your holiness, and repent of our sins. If we have sinned against you, please help us to turn away from the sins, and hate the sins, and knowing that sins are destructive. Oh Lord Jesus, help us to be repentant. Now at this time, I ask you to examine your heart. And ask God to forgive your sins. Examine your heart so that you will be repentant. Think of the people we have hurt. And ask God to forgive us. Oh Lord Jesus, turn our heart to you. Forgive our sins. Wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. Help us to believe in the forgiveness of God. And cleanse our soul. And help us to obey you and follow your holiness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, would you come out here as like yesterday, and then we'll keep praying for you, but at the same time, you will come to God with repentance. And then say, Lord, how can I live a life of love and holiness? How can I live a life of the love of God and the holiness of God? Hallelujah.